So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to session number three of Making the Most of Your Braille Sense 6 from Sight and Sound Technology. My name is Stuart Lawler. Um, I'm delighted to be back again with my colleague Sharon Lyons from Sight and Sound Technology in Dublin. Hello. And Sharon, welcome back. Great to Thank have you, you. back. Uh, Sharon's going to be helping today by uh, watching the raised hands and chat. And speaking of which, uh, if you'd like to raise your hand, you can do so on Zoom by pressing Alt and Y. Or if you're with us on a mobile device, you can activate the raise hand button. And you can type in the chat window by pressing Alt and H or activate the chat button if you're on a mobile device. Today, we're looking at the Play Store on the Braille Sense 6. We're gonna talk a little bit about installing, searching for uh, apps and um, installing apps. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about just some apps that I have installed and uh, just have a bit of a play around with a couple of apps and see what it's like. I suppose the big um, health warning at the start of this session is to say that mileage will vary and no two users are going to use the very same stuff. And just like you would with your mobile phone, there's a bit of trial and error. You may well install an app that nothing happens at all. And uh, you may very quickly uninstall it. And in fact, I will show you as well how to uninstall apps from the, from the Braille Sense 6. Um, the, the functionality for using the Braille Sense 6 in the, um, I guess when you're outside of the Braille Sense 6 um, user interface is slightly different. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And um, of course, the thing you need most importantly for this session is a Google account. So you have to have um, a Gmail username and password. And once you open the Play Store for the first time. If you haven't configured this already um, in the um, in the in the in the Braille Sense settings in the account settings, you'll be asked to sign in to the Play Store. As we said yesterday, it's a good idea to configure your um, your Google account in the Braille Sense settings first thing, and then you're kind of set up as we saw um, for Google Drive yesterday, and you'll also be set up for the Play Store. So I'm going to uh, share my screen as I did yesterday and share my, the sound of my Braille Sense 6. And we'll get started and have a look at some apps. So let's do the screen share. And bear with me just a moment. And here we go. We are now sharing the screen and hopefully you're hearing the Braille Sense 6. File Manager, F. And yep, that's sounds, great, Stuart. <clears throat> thank you, Sharon, and hopefully it sounds okay for everybody. So I'm at the File Manager. Uh, the Play Store is in the main menu, so you can scroll down to it if you wish, or you can press the letter P. I've already configured um, my Google account on my Braille Sense 6 uh, in the Accounts menu uh, within Settings. So once I... Um, once I go into the Play Store, it will already know that, um, that I have a Google account and that I'm signed in. So let's press P to go to the Play Store. File Play button for you. Press Enter to activate. We're now in the Play Store and we are in an Android application. So this is important. We've moved out of the Braille Sense user interface. We're in an Android application. So there are a few key keystrokes. Uh, our key commands, let's say, that you will want to be aware of. And the, the probably the most important ones are tab and shift tab. You'll find yourself doing a lot of tabbing around the screen when you are in um, an Android um, place. And you do that by pressing space with dot four and five to tab forward and space with dot one and two to tab back or function key um, F3 on its own to tab forward and space with function key three to tab back, whichever you prefer. But you can also do first letter navigation within um, an Android uh, screen, which is very useful. So if you have a, um, an application with a menu or if there's a, um, a button maybe, uh, you can navigate to that button by pressing its first letter. And first letter nav works uh, pretty well on the Braille Sense 6. Sometimes you will get a little bit of um, inconsistency and we are feeding those things back to hymns and they are 
creating fixes pretty quickly. So if you encounter any challenges in that regard, please do let us know. I'm in the Play Store now, and I am on the kind of the main screen. And on my Braille display, it actually says, um, there's a, an option that says for you, and it says press enter uh, to activate. And you'll hear this a lot, press enter to activate. Um, and I think somebody asked a question yesterday about um, how to create a double tap or how to simulate the, 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 um, the gesture um, if you wanted to double tap something rather than single tap. So we'll come across that maybe a little bit later on as well. I'm going to, I want to go to search for apps and games. And there's an option that says search for apps and games. I could get to it by tabbing along and I would get there eventually, but I can also press the letter S. So I'll do that now. Button stay entertained and inform TV, music, news and more press enter. So that's my stay entertained and uh, don't want that one. I'll press S again. Button search for apps, games, press enter to activate. That's the one I want. Search for apps and games, press enter to activate. So I'll press enter here. And I have, I have my little um, edit box with my cursor at the start of the line. And I'm going to search for and download, hopefully, the Netflix app, because I want to see what's on Netflix at the moment and what I might like to watch on my Braille Sense 6. So let's type in Netflix. And let's press enter. Button navigate up, press enter to activate. Now I am going to use um, my tab key. So I tend to do the space with dot four and five to navigate forward. Button search Google Play, press enter to active. Button voice search, press enter. Button navigate up, press enter to. Button Netflix, press enter to activate. Okay. Button search Google Play, press enter to. Button voice, button navigate up, press. Button Netflix, press enter Just to act. Press Netflix. It's, um, it seems to be working button away clear, something search, that press enter to activate. It's thinking, is it? Yeah, it's thinking. <laughs> You're too quick for it. Let's try a look now uh, that we have some. Uh, maybe try again. The app store. Okay. Edit box, button clear, search, press enter. Let's Edit box, button search. clear, search, press enter to activate. And, uh, button navigate up, press enter to act. Edit box, search for apps, games. Right. Netflix. And we'll press enter. Button navigate up, press enter to activate. And I'll tap. Net but button voice search, press button navigate up, press enter to button Netflix, press enter to activate. Okay, so we're not getting. But button voice search, Netflix. press enter to activate. Let me just close the app store and I'll open it again. I'm not it sure. It seems why, to have got stuck a bit there, Stuart. It may not, it's... yeah, may not want to connect to the app store. So let me just close this. Play Store, P. And I keep saying the App Store. Sorry, I'm very Appleist. <laughs> uh, for you, so button for you, press Enter to activate. App Store again. And we'll press S for search. Button stay entertained. Button search for apps, for games, apps press games. Enter to activate. Press enter. We have our cursor and we'll type Netflix and we'll press Enter. Button navigate up, press Enter to activate. Button, button search forward. Google Play button voice search press enter button navigate up press enter to button Netflix press bu button navigate up press okay. enter to activate. Uh, it could just be our look, uh, folks. <laughs> the Play Store is not working at the moment. Um, for you, button so for you, you press we'll enter do. to we'll activate. Come back to it. Uh, we'll come back to the Play Store in a few minutes, and in the worst case, I'll talk you through what would happen. Let me show you how you uninstall, or not even uninstall, but how you see what apps are on your device. There's two ways of doing it. Play Store, P. So I'm going to go back to my main menu to File Manager. File Manager, so Everybody F. knows where we are. It's a good point of focus, I think. You can view the apps on uh, your device by pressing the letter A to go into the All Apps uh, menu. Amazon Kindle. Um, there's the Amazon Kindle. I'm going to say something in a minute about Amazon Kindle app because we had some queries about this and I had queries and we've, we've been in touch with hymns about this in the last day or two, but I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, so my, my apps are listed now um, alphabetically, starting with A. Apple Music, Aquamail, Assistant. So these are all the apps I have installed. At the very end of this menu, if we do a space four, five, six. App Manager. There's the app manager. So let's go in here and see what we can do. Downloaded apps, Amazon Kindle, version 8, 1, 0, 140, 149, list item, 
So this, this lists all the apps that I have downloaded or installed. It also lists some of the stock Android apps that come on the device. So for example, um, you know, Google Drive or Google Sheets, uh, the camera app, you could uninstall any of these if you wanted. Um, so here's Amazon Kindle which is the first app I have installed, I actually want to uninstall the Aquamail app. So let's go down to Aquamail. Apple Music, Aquamail, version 1, 30, 1, 1828, 349 list item. Uh, so I'm on Aquamail. I'm going to hit the tab key once. Uninstall button. And I'm going to press enter. Do you want to uninstall this app? Yes prompt button. And yes is already highlighted, so I'm just going to press enter on this. Uninstall button. And if I shift and tab back. Downloaded apps, assistant, version zero, one, Apple Music, version so, three, um, six. It's now gone because um, Aquamail was after uh, Apple Music and now it's gone to assistant. So that's an easy way to just quickly browse through your apps. You can use first letter navigation here as well. So let's go for, for example, G. Gallery, version one, one, four, zero. You could uninstall, that's one of the stock Google apps. Gmail. Version two, Google, version one, two, Google News, version five, three, six. So you can uninstall any of these uh, if you want. So that's um, the app manager found within the all apps section of Braille Sense. This doesn't let you uninstall any of the Braille Sense apps, but it will let you manage um, the Android uh, applications. So let me do a space and Z here to close this. App manager. And let me get back to the main menu by pressing F1. File manager, F. So just in case we don't get to do this, the process for installing apps is very straightforward. You search for the app, uh, you type in the app name, you search for the app. And once the app comes up and you um, enter on the app, there will be an install button. That's assuming, of course, the app is free. If not, there'll be a buy button or purchase button. And in that instance, then you will either be prompted to set up a payment method if you haven't done so already, or if you have done so, it will charge your primary payment method. The good thing about um, the Play Store, of course, is that it uses PayPal. You can use PayPal as an option. So there's a couple of different options that you can use on Play Store. There are also apps that have um, in-app purchases available. Um, like Netflix, for example, is one of them. So on Google Apps, for example, you can sign up to services and pay via the app, which of course um, iOS does not let you do. So it's slightly different experience, but essentially you download the app and it will then appear in the all apps section um, in alphabetical order. So if you want to go to Netflix, for example, you'd go into the all apps and you'd go to Netflix. So let me just, I'm going to see if we can get the Play Store to come back again. If not, we'll just have a look at some of the apps that I have installed, but I'm hoping we do actually get to install an app or two. File place button for you, press enter to activate. So back in the Play Store, so let's go to search. Button stay entertained and in button search for apps, games, press enter to activate. Again, I pressed S with my uh, first letter navigation in the, on the Android system. I'll press enter here. I have my cursor. Uh, you don't always get, by the way, it's worth saying, you don't always get um, an audible prompt for that search. So it's a good idea to check your Braille display to make sure you have a cursor. What you will find in, um, in a lot of apps where there where you need to type information, there is, I guess there's something very similar to forms mode. You have to um, enter um, into the, um, into the form field or into the edit box in order for the cursor to appear and for you to start typing. So it's just worth knowing that and knowing that if you don't see the cursor, um, just try to tap into the edit field again um, by pressing the enter key and you will see your cursor. So let's try this again. Typing in Netflix and I'm pressing enter. Button navigate up, press enter to activate. And I'm going to tab forward. But button search, Google, button voice search, button navigate up, button and Netflix, so press enter well. to activate. Stuart, button search, Google Play, press enter to activate. Um, 
Netflix was on the main page. If if it's just not working today in okay. the search, it, it was on we, your main Google Play. Okay. Um, Let's see, can we do it Play there, Store then? page. Yeah. So just like to, uh, button Netflix. Button navigate up. Okay, press so enter to activate again. for you. Button for so you. We'll press see, enter to activate. Netflix by pressing N. Sharon has very helpfully told us that, of course, we could tab and we might eventually find it, but let's see if N will do it for us. Button for you, press enter to activate. Button for you, press enter. But button children, press enter to activate. It's making button me out children, to be a liar. Press enter. <laughs> but but button stay entered. <laughs> button Maurice. Button app. Button app. Button app. Amazon Prime Videos. Button app. Disney Star Rating. Button app. Button more results for stay entertained okay. and informed out of. <laughs> button stay entertained and informed. Button app. Disney star rating, 4.3. Enlist six it's items. It's just after Disney, actually. Button but app. Uh, Netflix oh, star oh, rating, okay. 4.3. Details ideal, for but... app. Netflix. Okay, that's great. But button search, Google Play, press enter. Button more options, press enter. Listing up purchases. Button image of app or game icon so for Netflix, press enter to activate. I swear, I hoped it would have brought us if we had searched for it. Do not know why it didn't, by the way. So it's one of those... Google oddities, I think. Uh, but there should be an install button here for Netflix. So we'll press I and see if install works. Button install, press enter to activate. Brilliant. And thank you, Sharon. So we'll press enter here to install Netflix. It did say button navigate up, purchase, press enter to activate. Which is correct because if you were to open um, the Netflix app and you didn't have a Netflix subscription, you would be um, prompted to, to sign up via the app. Button more option download in progress. So all I'm doing now is I'm tabbing through to see how it's going. I'm told it's download is in progress, so I know it's still downloading and then it will install. So I just need to wait for this to happen. And once this has happened, I'll be able to go back to the main menu and hopefully we'll find Netflix. I'm going to shift and tab for a sec. Button more options press. And I'm going to tab. Download in progress. And I'm still told the download is in progress. I have a horrible feeling the Play, the Play Store is having problems because this should not take this long to download Netflix. But we will check again. Button more options, press enter to activate. Download in progress. Yes, I think the Play Store may be temporarily having issues. Misbehaving, uh, Stuart. Misbehaving, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, uh, if I don't... If this doesn't button run, more options, it. press enter to activate. Try once more. Download in progress. Okay, yeah, Netflix is not going to install, it looks like. So I'm going to close the Play Store. I think, though, the people on this session and all of you are, I think, have set up your Braille Sense 6 at this stage. I suspect most of you have, uh, have dabbled in the Play Store already, and I suspect you have a good sense of how to install apps. So I think people are probably... Uh, happy enough with that. So let's close out of that for a sec. Stuart, can I just Play ask? P. Yeah. Uh, would it give you like a um, percentage download when it's when it's doing that? No, it was saying it, pending there, but it wasn't it wasn't reading yeah, out. Yeah, it might have if I had tabbed further. But you see, mm. it's usually so quick. It'll mm. say downloading and then it'll mm. say installing. And this thing would usually happen in a matter of seconds. And what is really frustrating is that I did this this morning. I installed <laughs> Netflix, signed in and then uninstalled it. So I said, that's great. Now we'll do that this afternoon. And hey, guess what? It doesn't work. So uh, we believe you, Stuart. I can guarantee you Netflix does work. And the interesting thing about this is Netflix was more problematic on the Polaris. So when you went in to play something, um, the 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 transport controls for things like play and pause and stop were very difficult to access on the Polaris and the controls for um, things like subtitling um, were very difficult. So this is much easier to do on Braille Sense 6, but unfortunately, we just haven't been able to do that. So let's just have a look at a couple of apps that I do have here and see um, what's available. The some people have asked about using the stock Gmail app for email. Um, I would say it is, it is usable just about, but it's not an efficient way to manage email. So you can use the stock Gmail app if you choose uh, for, your, for your Gmail, if you don't want to use the Braille Sense email app that we looked at on Monday. Um, Aquamail is another one that's very popular. Lots of people are using uh, Aquamail. There's a couple of different versions of it. So there's a free version, 
or there is a paid version. Um, and I think the paid version allows you to manage multiple accounts and has some additional uh, spam detection stuff. So you may choose to use the paid version if you were going to use it as your primary email um, client on the on the Braille Sense 6. Uh, I have Spotify on my device, so let's have a quick look at Spotify. Amazon Kindle. Uh, oh, yes, sorry. I did say I'd mention Amazon Kindle because this is kind of important. So we've had a, a couple of people reporting issues with the Amazon Kindle app. I used to use Kindle on my Polaris, but I hadn't put it on the Braille Sense 6 yet until Monday. Um, I did put it on the Braille Sense 6, and I reproduced the issue that other people had contacted us about, and it's a pretty fundamental one. Um, that you couldn't turn pages. So you could essentially read the first page of a book, but you weren't able to go further. Uh, we contacted HIMSS about this. They reproduced the same problem and weren't able to fix it either. So it's now on their priority list to be looked at. Um, so if anyone's having an issue with the Amazon Kindle app, you're not alone and it has been flagged and hopefully will be fixed. But I thought it was kind of an important one to mention. Uh, let's press the letter S. Settings. So this is the settings uh, app, which of course is also in the main menu uh, under Android system settings, but you can get to it here either. Sure plus modded audio. This is an app I have for managing a, a microphone I have called the Sure Plus, and the app is called Motive Audio. Spotify. And here's Spotify. So I'm going to press enter on Spotify. List Spotify. Home button shortcut romantic ballads row one column one and grid two rows three columns press enter to activate. So that's clearly what I was listening to last on Spotify. Uh, if I so basically now I can tab around this screen and I find in apps like Spotify, which frequently will update based on what you've been listening to or what they think you'd like to listen to. Uh, so what a lot of these apps try to do is they're using AI to predict, oh, you know, Stuart listened to, I don't know, uh, listen to the Beach Boys last week. He might like to hear something similar in that genre. So they try to predict this and this stuff updates dynamically. So it's often changing quite a lot. So if we press tab. Button shortcut Nikki Keeley column two press button shortcut superstar remaster 2021. Column three, press enter to act. Button shortcut, mixed row two, column one, press enter to active. Button shortcut, curry and Van Eichel, new content, column two, press enter to so activate. This uh, Spotify picks up not only music I listen to, but podcasts I would have listened to as well, because they all come under the same, um, the same account. So if I wanted to go back, say, to... Good morning out of grid. Button shortcut, romantic ballads, row one, column one, and grid here. two rows. Three columns, press enter to activate. And this Button is, home, this tab is one of three, to, press enter to activate. To open the playlist that I have uh, listened to in the past called Romantic Ballads. So now I can tab forward here. Button your library, tab three. When we collide, press Matt Cardle, press enter to act. Seek control use volume, button disable like button previous, press enter, button play, press enter to act. Button next, press enter These to are activate. The transport controls, which will always appear on the screen once you're uh, in a playlist. So if, and if you start playing something, these transport controls will, apply, will appear as well. And you can use shortcut keys to navigate to them. So in the case of anything that plays uh, audio, something like Spotify, um, Apple Music, Google Music, whatever you're using, you're probably going to switch off the voice at some point and just use Braille. But you can easily get to these buttons by pressing P for play and S, uh, sorry, play pause, N for next and F for four, uh, F. Button for devices for available, device. press enter to at 3H 14 minute button for the real romantics out there. Press that button, Spotify, press enter to act button, stop liking this playlist, press enter button, download, press enter to active button, more options for so playlist, I'm, I'm romantic. I'm scrolling through the options of the playlist. So I gave a little description of the playlist. There's a button that I could stop liking it. Um, and there's a button that I can download the entire playlist to my device if I wanted to listen offline. Button back, press enter to active button, shuffle, play playlist, button, Everglow, cold play, row one and grid 50 rows, I can shuffle six the columns, if press I want. enter to activate. The first song, um, which is um, a song by Coldplay um, called Everglow. And if I press enter here, it's going to start playing the song. Let me 
just it should start playing the song. Button more options for song of button Everglow Coldplay press enter to activate. Button button more options for song flashlight from pitch per button button more options for song of Everglow row one press button Everglow Coldplay press enter to activate. So normally this would play. Um, um, Stuart, I think there's, there's something that says no internet connection available at the bottom. I d don't know ah. why, because then it wouldn't be casting, would it? Precisely. Yeah. <laughs> say okay. nothing. Say nothing. No, no idea why that is. Um, it might make some sense, though, why, although it mm. logged us into Spotify, so I'm not mm -hmm. actually sure. And do you have a Spotify um, account, Stuart? You, yes. Yeah, you'd yeah. have to have a. Yeah, you have this. to have a Spotify account to, and you you log in. In fact, once you're logged in on one device, so when I did this on my on my Braille Sense Six, I was already logged in on my phone, and it gave me a code, so I didn't have to put in my user username and password, which was mm -hmm. which was very handy. Um. Okay, not sure why that's not letting us connect um to that but i think the key thing to mention from all this is the the navigation commands that you're tabbing and shift tabbing a lot uh you're using first letter navigation if you want to jump to particular areas of the screen and you're using the let's call it the forms mode style way of um of using forms uh if you come to um an edit box or a form field um you can you can tab into that form field and enter text by um, entering, first of all, and making sure you have your cursor and typing text at that point. Um, I suppose the other thing with Android is that there will be apps that have unlabeled buttons and there is some work, it hasn't been released yet, by the way, but there is some work being done on creating some uh, button labeling tools within the uh, mobile screen reader used on Braille Sense 6. So that will help where there are apps that are, might be a little more challenging that you'll be able to label the buttons yourselves. And the other thing I'd probably say about the App Store is um, app updates. So you can check within, or rather in the Play Store, you can check within the Play Store if your uh, apps are up to date. And you can also, normally they will update automatically, but you can go into uh, your app library. There's an option that says my apps and games. And if you go in there, you go to library and you go to uh, updates. And if there are any updates pending, you can install them. Uh, but if your device has been on long enough, they'll all be automatically updated anyway. So it's a good place to go and check if there's something that you're looking for an update, um, you'll usually get it there. Now, it's probably a good time, Sharon, to see if there are any questions or if anybody wants to um, ask anything. I mean, what would be very interesting to hear, anyone who has had particular success with a particular app, did your favorite app work on the, on the Braille Sense 6 or the Polaris, if you've had a Polaris before this? Um, is there anything you, you particularly recommend that might be of use to other people uh, who are attending this session? We'd love to hear that as well. It's all quiet, Stuart, at the moment. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can raise your hand with Alt and Y, or y, uh, you can type in the chat with Alt and H. Um, Kevin, Kevin Mulhern has a question here. Kevin I'll was here yesterday. You Hi, mic. Kevin. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't unmute. Um, That's great. It, 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 it's... I always ask the most basic questions in the world, but you you know the second switch along on the left, from, I'm sorry, from the left hand side, which says media mode, what not road, apps mode. We've never actually addressed that in three days, and I'm wondering if it's something that's not really meant to be there. Does it matter what position that's in? Okay, so it's a great there's there's and there's no such thing as a as a, a stupid question, by the way. Or a basic question. So please. No, it's a good point. Um I didn't address it because it's not necessarily new, but it's well worth addressing. So there are three, as you said, there's three uh three positions the switch can be in. Mine is media mode. Mine is on media button mode. Button Everglow Cold Play Row One Press Enter to right, activate. Right hand key. The media mode is used for the media player. So you know the flat buttons then afterwards, Kevin, where you have um, yeah. 
rewind, stop, um, record, which is the one with the dot, yeah. play and fast forward. That's used in the media player if you're listening to music or if you're creating a recording. Uh, the middle mode. Daisy mode. Is Button in Virgo Coldplay Row 1, reading, press enter um, to activate. If, sorry, if you're reading a, a, um, a Daisy book uh, in the Daisy player, you can use those keys to navigate you through the book. And the last one is app mode. App mode. And Button in Virgo Coldplay Row 1, press enter to activate. So with app mode, you can use these keys to move around the screen uh, instead of using the, the tab key to go forward and back, for example. Uh, I don't tend to use those. But you can also, and I don't know if this works in Spotify, I haven't done it, but you can, uh, in app mode, for example, hold down the play button to play something or hold down the next button or the fast forward button to move to the next track. Uh, we did test this before and it worked in Netflix and I think in Apple Music, but I have not done it in Spotify. Um, so that's what they're used for. And as you say, there's a three position switch. And maybe while we're talking about switches, we should mention the other three position switch that's here in case anyone is unsure. And this is to lock the keyboard. So the keyboard can be unlocked when the switch is completely to the right, or when the switch is in the middle. Top panel locked. The top panel can be locked. Cold so, play row one, press enter to activate. So this means you can read, for example, read braille and if you uh, inadvertently hit off the keyboard keys, it's not going to um, make uh, make a difference. And then you can also flick it right to the left. All keys locked. And that will lock the entire Button the Virgo Coldplay Row 1, press enter so to activate. if you were moving around with the device and you had it turned on, sometimes people use this a lot in schools to lock uh, their Braille Sense 6 when they're moving between classes. So uh, it, that's a great question. And thanks for bringing that up, Kevin. Just one other thing, just to say, um, I don't know whether there's a difference between where we are, but I was online the whole time and I did get into Netflix following, you know, we had an account, so I just entered the details when it sort of asked me to. So the um, it, it, it did work following Good. what you were saying earlier. I'm glad. I'm glad. To, yeah, it's obviously my something local to me. Um, oh, believe so. me, that is the best thing about these sessions to so know it's not just me. Oh no, we do have these regularly. It's uh, yeah. it's part yeah. of the uh, and and I think and I'm glad that worked for you because uh, Netflix. When I did it this morning, it also picked up my login from my Google account because I I save all my passwords on Google, yeah. so I didn't even have to log into Netflix. It was very and I was very glad I didn't because again I use one of these long yeah. uh, passwords. So and yeah, I did thanks. Audible and I did Audible yesterday and that worked as well. Yeah, Audible works very nicely on the yeah. Braille Sense device yeah. as well. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for that, Kevin. Appreciate Thank the you. question. Thank Thanks, you. Kevin. Um, we also have um, Susie. Susie. Okay. I've lowered your hand now. There we go. Oh, yeah, Susie's been at our sessions before. Hello. Hi, Susie. Hi. Hi, how are you all? Good, Good to hear you. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm so sorry. I uh, Obviously, I couldn't be here on Monday and Tuesday because I was at work. Yeah. But uh, Stuart, I am actually, I am still struggling with the old question. And I know you just a few minutes ago addressed the issue of Kindle. The situation, the, my problem is, you know, when I try to download the Kindle app, Obviously, it didn't work, you know, even because my hope was that I could uh, download it from Amazon directly, but it didn't. So does it, should it be working? Uh, Susie, thank you for raising this. Are you, you're still on a Polaris, if I'm not mistaken, aren't you? No, I am actually. I, you're on a six. Braille said six. Okay, yeah. so I should have, the, the other thing about the Kindle is you can't download the Kindle app from the Play Store yeah. because uh, the Play Store sees the Braille Sense 6 as, as, a, um, as something to get a screen, so it doesn't let you do that. Yeah. I have, an, I have an, a link, a direct link to the Kindle app that we've been sending out to people, so I'll send that to you if you send me an email. I would appreciate because you were going to do one or two things for me <laughs> last year, but I never heard, you know. Yeah, just get back in touch with us, Susie. Um, if you don't hear, always get back in touch. Um, 
So we'll we'll have a look. But I will I will say to you, as I said earlier, Kindle is not currently working on the no, Braille six, so you won't. Okay. Once that's fixed, uh, they will release an update for that. But I'll send you, in any case, I'll send you the link where you can download the Kindle app. That would be brilliant. So what I have to do to uh, basically send you my email. Yeah, just send me an email to say you want the Kindle app and we'll send you a link to so yeah. you can download that. Also, just I know that is because maybe I missed part or partly because I wasn't obviously available. But you know, when when the Braille Sense Six came, I mean, it was a lot of advertising about it. And I wonder if, if in a few sentences, can you tell me what is so brilliant about this one that it wasn't in other versions? So um, Android 10 is the probably the most obvious or the most notable. You've jumped five versions of Android ahead. Yeah. So you're and the Android version will be um, is going to get an upgrade probably next year. So you'll go on okay. to Android 11. And okay. I suppose the biggest thing I've found out, outside of the fact that it's on Android 10 and that it's faster, I've yeah. found that many, more, many more apps I've searched for on the Play Store um, can be installed. Whereas on Polaris, I was finding yeah. more and more apps were saying this is not compatible with your device. And I was trying to have yeah. to search for older, older apps. Uh, so you're just in a better place with Android version 10. Yeah. You've got a faster, uh, a significant faster processor. You've double the memory and double the storage, yeah. and you have some additional USB ports to to connect other things. So, for example, you can connect external cameras, external headsets, okay. um, that you wouldn't have had the flexibility to put on the Polaris. Okay, uh, and the, lastly, you know, these because I missed. Um, Monday and Tuesday, and I might miss, actually, I think I will be missing tomorrow's. Is the recording available? Yes. So at the end of the week, they, all the recordings will be made available on the Sight and Sound YouTube channel and also on the Sight and Sound podcast page. And anyone who's registered for this session, um, regardless what sessions you were able to attend or were not able to attend, you'll get an email at the end of the week with a link yeah. to that. That's wonderful. Thanks very much. All right, Susie, good to talk Thank to you. Thank you. And you too. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. Thank you. Bye, Sharon. Bye. So, um, Stuart, is Bookshare one of the apps that is now available that wasn't before? Yeah, that actually, that's a good point. Bookshare is available, and we're going to look at Bookshare tomorrow. Oh, um, yeah. Great. Yeah, so there's a Bookshare app. You could have used on the Polaris, there was other Synchronizing apps, data uh, with storage for, service. Sorry, for accessing Bookshare. <laughs> Unlocked. Just going to close this. The Virgo yes, there were other apps for using uh, Bookshare, but Bookshare is available now on the uh, Polaris uh, or on the Braille Sense Six, rather, as as a um, a built-in app, which is which is really good. So we'll be having a look at that tomorrow. Um, the other thing about just browsers, I will mention for a sec in relation to um, Android. I have used uh, Google Chrome, and I have used. Microsoft Edge on the Braille Sense 6, both of which work really well. Uh, I was talking to somebody else who said they think Edge works even a little bit better than Chrome, but I probably didn't use them for that long to really make a, um, to form a, a, a view on that, but you can use Edge or Chrome. So where the traditional HIMSS browser may not uh, be able to access content on some pages, you might have more luck with uh, with Chrome or Edge. So just for anyone who might want to use that, they are also available. Mm -hmm. So um, apologies for our technical difficulties, uh, I, but I hope people did get a sense of, of what to do. And I'm really glad that, um, that it has been working. I, I know some people were uh, we're, we're following along and it seemed to seem to work. So I think that's great to know. If there's any other uh, questions at this point, you can raise your hand or you can type in the chat if you'd like to ask anything else. Other, otherwise, please join us tomorrow for the last session um, where I'll be looking at um, the Bookshare uh, app and we'll be looking at language profiles and um, We'll have a chat chance as well just to answer any other questions about Braille Sense 6 that we 
may have missed uh, over the week. So if there are any general questions that people have, you're welcome to come along tomorrow as well. I think that's all the questions, Stuart. There's no more Brilliant. hands raised okay. and the chat is very quiet today. The chat is very quiet. That's good. I think people are relatively, hope people are relatively happy. Thank you, Sharon, for your help. Sharon won't be with us tomorrow. Fanula will be back. Um, so thanks, Sharon, for coming no along problem. for the last two days. Um, and we look forward to seeing those of you who can attend tomorrow. As I said a few moments ago, these sessions will be made available for everybody at the end of oh. the week. Um, Kevin's just raised his hand there. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Just... And I was, I, it was Kevin who was following along, wasn't it? And it did work for him. So that was good. <laughs> good to hear. No, two, um, just two very quick bits. One is, can you, can, is there a simple straight to reset? That's just because I got in a muddle yesterday after I left and it took me a while to reset. And secondly, we can't end without uh, the joke. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> great. Well, there you go. Right. Get away with hold, it hold, <laughs> hold the joke for one sec. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Um, is there a simple? So there is what we call the warm reset, which I suggest people use. And that is holding down um, F2 and F3 and pressing all six dots. And you'll get a message saying system will reboot and your machine will, it'll, it should take no more than maybe 30 yeah. seconds max, it'll come back Perfect. on. Perfect, thank you. Sharon, we can't end without the joke. Has anybody else got any questions now? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all down to the joke now, Sharon. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Why was beef stew not used as a password? Why was beef stew not beef used as a password? Stew. Why was beef stew? Beef stew. Because, because it was not strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note. Sorry. Then, on that note. Sorry, I'm going now. You've got Fanula uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the soup. <laughs> You're in the soup. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for the joke. Thank you, everybody, no for your attendance. And we look forward to seeing uh, some of you or all of you, perhaps, tomorrow for the last day of our Braille Sense sessions. So right. thanks, everybody. <laughs>